Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to create this drop down menus that I love to add to all of my products. These drop downs are fully customizable and they are those elements are added with the elements that you enter in this table. So I'm going to show you how to achieve that. And then I'm also going to show you how to create this functionality in which you double click on a cell and a calendar appears and then you can format the date so it looks however you want it to look. So I'm not going to show you how to create this whole thing. This is just an example of how I use these two functionalities. This is a to-do list. So if you are interested in this product, you can find a video about that in the description down below. So let's start with the date functionality. So what you're going to do is you're going to select a cell, any cell, and then you're going to click on data, data validation, and then this menu is going to appear. So you're going to select from this drop down date, and then you're going to leave this is valid date option selected. And then I like to reject the input in case it's not a valid date, but you can also only show a warning. So I'm going to reject the input and then I'm going to show validation help text. So this is what it usually says. So let's just add please and then save. So now if I double click on this cell, this calendar is going to appear. And once you select a date, then that date is going to show up in that cell. Now you can customize the way that date looks by clicking on the cell and then clicking on format number. And then I'm going to go to custom date and time. So this list is filled with date formatting options. So I'm going to select maybe this one, this long one. And then once I click that, this is going to change. And this is the way the date format is going to be structured. So what you can do is you can click here and then see all of these different options. So in case you don't want the full month, August, and you just want like maybe the first three letters, you can just set the month as an abbreviation and that's going to change here. And then you can also set the day as an abbreviation. And then as you can see, right in between day and month, there's a little comma. So you can add your own symbols. So that could be a comma, that could be a dash. So let's do dash just for the example. And then as you can see, my formatting is now matching what I just selected. So I'm going to go back. It's going to give me, it's going to drive me crazy to leave it like that. So let's just bring back the comma. And there you have it. Now, if you want to do this for several cells, you can just select all of those cells, as many as you want, and then repeat those steps. So date, reject input, please. And now you have a calendar in all of these cells. And if you want that formatting that you added as well, then you can just go and select it from your previous formatting selections. So there you have it. This is a calendar functionality. Now let's build a drop down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write all my drop down elements. And I'm just going to wrap them visually in a little table. This makes absolutely no difference on the functionality. I just like to do this so I know, so I remember what I selected for my drop down. So now let's create the drop down. So I'm going to select any cell. I'm going to click on data, data validation again, and then I'm going to select this option that says list from range. And then I'm going to click here and I'm going to select these range. So you can move this around, <laughs> click OK. I'm going to show a warning right now and then I'm going to just click save. So if you don't enter valid data, it's not going to actually reject the input. It's just going to show a warning. So I'm going to click save. And now, as you can see, my drop down was created with all of these elements. And if I keep adding elements, since I selected this entire section to fill my drop down, if I keep adding elements, they are going to keep appearing. So now I have element five right here. And then you can also, you can select it from the drop down and you can also start typing. So if you start typing, it's going to start filtering right now. It makes no difference because it's the same text, but let's do something different. And as you can see, I entered something that was invalid and it's just showing me a warning. I'm going to show you what happens if you select the other option that won't actually allow you to add anything that's not a valid input, meaning that is in this table. So let's add something different. So now if I start typing, it's going to start filtering. If I type one, it's going to filter one. If I type Yes, it's going to filter yes, and you can just easily use the arrows and select those options. Now let's create one that won't allow you to enter invalid data. So you select 
any cell, data validation, list from range, and then you click here, you select your range once again, click OK, and then I'm going to reject input, and then I'm going to just add please. And I have this, and I can add any element from this table, but if I start typing something that's not in that table, not in table, it's not going to allow me to do that. And it's also going to show this error message that, as you remember, I edited and added this please text. So this error message can be whatever you want it to be. So click OK, and then you select something valid. And then what happens if I delete this element from the list? So let's say I selected element three for both of those drop downs, and I delete that element, then it's going to show a warning because that element is no longer in my valid range. So that's it for this video. It's a really simple explanation, but these are just the basic steps that you need to know to get started. And once you know this, you can just start playing around with all of the different options. So thank you for watching.